Let me explain what a cell does during the day. How does the cell know what to do? Right? We have a DNA, it's a spiral, we'll call it a helix. A lot of people see this picture every once in a while. This DNA is, your, is part of the chromosome, it's part of your genetic code. This is how you look like you look, how I look like I look. That's determining your genes. So in order for the cells to look at your genes, what happens multiple times a day or multiple times even a second, that DNA has to open up. And now we have two strands of DNA that are kind of hooked together in that uh, helix that are now coming apart. And these two strands are being copied. Okay? So now we're making a copy. That copy is called an RNA. Okay? That copy will go into the cell. I mean, all, all that happens in the cell, in the nucleus of the cell. So the nucleus is the part, kind of, the, I say, the most, you know, one of the most important parts of the cell. So it's unraveling, the RNA is, uh, is created, the copy, and it leaves now. The nucleus goes into the cell, in, uh, where we have a bunch of different things. And the helix goes back together. So now we have a copy out there, and that copy will tell, basically, in what sequence you have to bring in certain amino acids to put together, to build together some blocks. It's like building Lego, right? And depending on what the RNA says, it's a different sequence. Depending on the sequence of the amino acid, you get different proteins or different hormones. This is how your body knows what to do. It's all built on this whole kind of process of reading the DNA, creating a copy, and then the copy attracts the amino acid in a certain order, and that will create the proteins, and peptides, and hormones, and all these kind of things. So. The big question now becomes, how does the cell know this DNA is that long? How does it know to start reading here to here, not here to here, right? And we call these kind of pieces that will determine where you start reading this DNA. Um, there's a bunch of different names for that and different kind of uh, pieces, but one of those we call transcription factors. They will go in there and determine you're going to start reading here and stop reading here. We know that certain foods, ingredients in the foods, act as transcription factors. We know that when you exercise, you have makes changes in your, in your composition, and that can act as a transcription factor. Essential oils, we know, act as transcription factors. So the essential oil will tell your DNA where to start reading, where to stop reading. And that will determine what kind of proteins the cell will produce. That's pretty cool, right? So take that to cancer. Well. Frankincense, and specifically, but some other oils too, like thyme or curcumin, um, you know, many myrrh, uh, sandalwood, I mean, name it. But frankincense, let's go with this one, um, can go into what we call signaling pathways. The cancer cell has a bunch of ways to start growing and keep on growing. And we call this all kind of pathways. So the cancer cell will create certain proteins that will really stimulate the growth. On the other hand, we can create proteins that will stop the growth of a cancer cell. We call them tumor suppressor uh, proteins, for example. And one of them is called P53. People lacking this P53 will start creating cancers. So we are trying now to get P53 into your cells by using viruses and all kind of stuff. So research is kind of moving in a whole bunch of different directions. But we know that, for example, frankincense will go into your cell will change the transcription factor of your cell, basically determine how you start reading, and that will activate a special pathway where one protein called AKT will be activated, and that will stimulate P53. And so now the cell will start producing P53, and P53 will stop the cancer from growing. That's just one kind of very complicated way to try to explain how that works. Other ways that cancer cells work um, if you have metastases, for example, you know, the cells spreading across your body. In order to spread into the tissue, it needs to go that you have circulating cancer cells that are in your blood flow, and then they need to attach to the vessel wall. And we have some matrix metalloproteins, or MMPs, we call them, um, amongst many other things that are on the uh, outside or the inside of the vessel. And so when these cancer cells attack with like little hooks to there, something happens and the vessel wall opens slightly and the cancer cells go into the tissue. We know that essential oils can inhibit this protein on the vessel wall. So therefore the cancer cell will just slide by and cannot go into the tissue. We know that the um, essential oil will inhibit once it goes outside, the cancer cell needs to have new blood flow, new nutrition. And it does that by being uh, in an oxygen poor environment the, the moment the oxygen gets less and less and less, the cancer cell will produce 
um, um, some compounds that will attract blood vessels to come in to bring in new oxygen and new nutrition. We know that essential oils can prevent that from happening, so we call this preventing angiogenesis. The cancer cell needs uh, to go through a different cycles, cell cycles, in order to grow. All the cells need to do that. We call this a cell cycle. Essential oils and specifically frankincense can stop this cell cycle from turning around and can stop the cancer cell and program it to die. So frankincense and other oils can stimulate uh, killer cells in your uh, white blood uh, um, cells. We call them T cells or killer cells. All they do is like Pac-Man, they go around your blood and eat away stuff that doesn't belong in there, such as cancer cells. So when you wear your bees, you have very few of those and they become very sluggish. That's one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why obesity leads to cancers. So uh, let's assume you have normal activity on those. When you get frankincense and other oils, they become, you multiply those, they become very, very active and you accumulate around the cancer cells. So frankincense uh, does something to accumulate those T cells just around the cancer cells to eat them up.